ES Audio. Hello, I'm Mark Blunden and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, what caused two and a half thousand seals to be found dead in the Caspian Sea. But first, the world's biggest radio telescope is being built in South Africa and Australia to investigate deep into the galaxy for the origins of the Big Bang and even hunt aliens. The square kilometre array is so big it'll be controlled across the two countries and it's even going to have an operating area of half a million square metres. The super spyglass is due for completion in 2028 and will include around 200 satellite dishes plus more than 130,000 antennae. It's hoped the sensitivity of the telescope will mean the ability to sniff out radio signals faintly bleeping from billions of light years away. Next. The urgency needed to save the planet is ever accelerating. While the time we have to make meaningful changes is ebbing away. That's Prince William speaking of the need to urgently fix our planet. But just as President John F. Kennedy had faith that humankind could put a man on the moon, I have the same faith today that we can repair and regenerate our planet in this critical decade. The heir to the throne made the plea in a video message after announcing the winner of the Earthshot Prize. Among the five winners are childhood friends from Oman who invented a way to turn CO2 into rock. Now, researchers found that microbiomes living on coral actually move around and shift their positions when their host goes into winter hibernation. Scientists at the University of California, Davis, hope the discovery could help them better understand the strategies coral uses to help it adapt to climate change. Microbes help supply nitrogen to coral, and balancing levels of the chemical is crucial to help reefs handle pressure from human activity such as filtering sewage and fertilizer. Research into one reef in the Atlantic Ocean found when coral was dormant, specimen microbiomes adjusted the amount of pathogens released and nutrients absorbed. Conservationists are probing how around 2,500 dead seals were found along southern Russia's Caspian coast. Russian state media reports early indications suggest the animals died of natural causes and no violence was involved. But the number of seals found dead is far higher than the initial number of 700 that was first estimated. Caspian seals are classed as endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature and are on the organisation's red list. The Caspian Environmental Protection Centre says there's no evidence currently that suggests the seals were killed by fishing nets, but the real worry is there are just 70,000 of the animals left. A crew of Chinese taikonauts are back safely on terra firma after spending six months on what's got to be one of the world's toughest building projects that's completing construction of the Tiangong space station. China's state media reported the trio touched down in the Gobi Desert. The three taikonauts were on the Shenzhou 14 mission launched in June with their mission including looking after spacecraft docking onto the space station's modules and conducting three spacewalks. The complete Tiangong space station weighs around 66 tonnes and is part of a 30-year-long space programme for China. Let's go to the ads coming up. Sad news involving TikTok's Noodle the Pug and an 11-year-old is banned from Twitch. Welcome back. An 11-year-old Valorant player has been banned from Twitch after it emerged. He was two years under age for the platform. Why is this of interest? Well, the Brazilian player managed to hit Radiance level. That's the highest possible rank achievable in the game. The player even tried to get around the rules by playing with his parents looking over his shoulder. But Twitch moderators were adamant. Levin is too young. The minimum age for the platform is 13 years old and it's part of measures to improve child safety. And finally, Noodle the Pug, who took the internet by storm with the TikTok game No Bones in 2021, has died aged 14 and a half. That's according to his owner. Fans have flooded the page of Noodle with messages of condolence after his owner, Jonathan Graziano, posted the news. Noodle rose to notoriety after Graziano would create adorable posts of the pug each morning, either standing up or flopping back to bed, indicating whether it was a bones or no bones day. 
The heartwarming content became a smash hit on the platform, with Noodle's account amassing some four and a half million followers. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the leader from the Evening Standard here in London. Tech and Science Daily is back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.